Bruce. <laughs> All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call the March 6, 2023 Crest Hill City Council meeting to order at 7 p.m. If everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag <clears throat> and please remain standing after the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Over the past uh, last two weeks, the city of Crest Hill lost Mrs. Beverly Ramuda, passed away. She is the daughter of the third Crest Hill mayor, Mayor Felix Borio. Uh, also was the wife of Mr. Bill Ramuda, who was a longtime Crest Hill city employee uh, in the maintenance department and the uh, mechanics department. So she was lifelong Crest Hill resident. We certainly want to offer our condolences to the Ramuda and to the Boreal family for their loss. Uh, she was well known in the community, involved in many civic uh, organizations. I think it's uh, out of respect also that we take a moment of silence for the Chicago police officer who was so tragically killed in Chicago last week and whose funeral will be on Thursday of this week. And let us pray also, if you do pray, pray for all of our first responders. Um, keep them safe in their travels. Keep them safe as they help others and to provide, to provide safety and medical treatment to all that they serve. So we offer our condolences to the police officer's family also and uh, offer our condolences to them. So I would ask for a moment of silence for both, both of the individuals. Thank you. Roll call, please, Chris. Ray Solomon. Here. Glenn Conklin. Present. Scott Dyke. Here. John Bichet. Here. Darrell Jefferson. Here. Claudia Gazal. Here. Tina Oberlin. Present. Mark Sapiti. Here. Nate Albert. Here. And Joe Kubo. Here. Thank you. Okay, I would like to uh, pass on uh, agenda item the first one for the public hearing at this time. We are waiting for Miss Nina Coppola to uh, appear. She's running a little late, stuck in traffic. So as soon as she comes in, we will revert back to the first agenda item when she gets there because she is going to be the individual that is going to give the PowerPoint presentation to the city council and to the public. So we'll move on to agenda item number two, and that will be the approval of the minutes of the City Council meeting held on February 21st, 2023. Motion would be in order. So moved. Second. We have motion by Alderman Albert, seconded by Alderwoman Gazal for the approval of the City Council minutes of the February 21st, 2023 City Council meeting. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Scott Dyke. Yes. John Bershay. Yes. Darrell Jefferson. Yes. Claudia Gazal. Yes. Tina Oberlin. Yes. Mark Sapiti. Yes. Nate Albert. Yes. And Joe Kubo. Yes. Motion carries, thank you. And you also have before you the minutes of the work session held on February 27th, 2023. Motion would be in order. So move. Second. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Albert, seconded by Alderwoman Gazal for the approval of the work session minutes held on February 27th, 2023. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. John Roche? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Ken Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. And Scott Dyke? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Nina is here. So we're going to give her just a minute to set up her laptop so the uh, individuals in our uh, audience that are here in person can follow along with the presentation. And we will give her a chance to get her coat off.
Okay, with, uh, with this, I would like to go back to agenda item number one. There is a need to conduct a public hearing with respect to designating a redevelopment project area, approving the redevelopment plan and project, the adoption of a tax increment, allocation, financing, and all other matters required by the TIF Act for the proposed Weber Division TIF District. I would ask for a motion to go into uh, public hearing. So moved. Second. We have motion by Alderwoman Gazal, seconded by Alderperson Overland to enter into a uh, public hearing at 7 10 p.m. The first order of business is some comments from our city administrator, Jim Marino. <coughs> Jim? Good evening, Mayor and Council. As you, you may recall, call? last year. Excuse this me a second. You want roll call? We had a sure. motion. Um, Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gasol? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Roche? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, Jim. Okay, uh, last year, as you may recall, we engaged Kane McKenna and Associates to perform a TIF eligibility study and to assist the city with the process of establishing a TIF district at the northwest corner of Weber Road and Division Street. During that process, the state law requires that certain actions be taken to create the TIF district. The first action was taken, which was to convene a meeting of the Joint Review Board. The next action is to hold a public hearing, which is what we are doing tonight. The third action will be the City Council approving ordinances that actually create the TIF district. Right now, that's scheduled for approval on March 20th. Kane McKenna did an analysis of the property and determined that the property meets the criteria to be designated as a TIF district. Uh, the benefit of a TIF district is it provides the funding necessary for public improvements. That could be street improvements, other public improvements like water and sewer, um, development improvements uh, that would uh, encourage and uh, other developments and increase property values. Tonight in the audience, we have uh, Nina Coppola from Kane McKenna, our TIF attorney, David Silverman, and our consulting engineer, Dana West, with Robinson Engineering. So with that, I'll turn it over to Nina who will give the PowerPoint presentation, which unfortunately we can't show on the screen, but all of you should have a copy of it in your packet. Yeah. So apologies for that. Um, thank you, Jim, Mayor, City Council. Um, we are here tonight to do a presentation and explain a little bit to all of you and all of you um, the notion of establishing a Weber Road Division Street TIF district. Um, I've got, there's four agenda items in the presentation. The first one, we will just briefly describe the redevelopment project and plan, the TIF redevelopment project and plan, which will cover some background as, as to why this, is ha why this was suggested to be done, um, and then some of the plans and objectives. Um, 
I can present a map with the location so you can see exactly what we're talking about. And then we'll talk a little bit about how this complies with the TIF Act. Um, the second part of the presentation will go over the city's strategic and fiscal planning. Um, we'll talk about the city's planning objectives, strategies, um, to sort of give you some context for um, the basis for this proposed TIF district. And then um, beyond that, we will go over quickly the TIF qualification factors, how this qualifies as a TIF based on the statutory requirements. And then um, at the end, we'll talk about the major elements of the plan, like the budget and similar things. So um, the first section, the TIF redevelopment plan and project, just in the way of some background information as to how, how this came to be, um, was basically the city took a look at the comprehensive plan from 2014. And the comprehensive plan does provide for certain direction um, and policy objectives to um, the Weber Road Division Street area. The plan describes that area in, as a regional community commercial development that should be targeted as such. Um, the plan states, quote, that, the Web that Weber Road represents the city's greatest opportunity for large-scale regional retail and commerce. Uh, the plan also states, quote, that new development, especially along Weber Road, has the potential to transform the local and regional identity of Crest Hill. And so based on all of the above and what the comprehensive plan says about this particular area, the city is proposing the Weber Road Division Street TIF district, recognizing the, oppor the potential opportunities that are there. Um, <coughs> The redevelopment plan and project does have certain objectives, um, including encouraging development of underutilized sites, reducing or eliminating impediments to private development within the area to give private development a better chance of happening, um, to coordinate redevelopment activities within the proposed district, TIF district in order to provide a, mar a uh, positive market signal to private investors, and finally, to further the goals and objectives of the city's comprehensive planning efforts. Um, the proposed TIF district is located specifically at the northwest corner of Weber Road and Division Street, and it consists of three vacant tax parcels um, comprising about 70 acres. So this is, this is what it looks like, just to give you some perspective on the location. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, one of the things that we have to do when we establish a redevelopment, a TIF redevelopment project is plan is make sure that it complies with the requirements of the state statute um, and, and its legal provisions. Um, some of those include um, making, making sure that the plan conforms with the city's comprehensive plan, which based on the statements I read you earlier, it does. Um, the proposed TIF, TIF, TIF district has to consist at least of one and a half contiguous acres. As I indicated earlier, this is around 75 acres, so we're well beyond that requirement. The proposed district also has to meet statutory requirements as either a uh, conservation area or a blighted vacant area, and we have found that, the, that this area is, can be deemed as a blighted <coughs> vacant area, and that's due to a history of chronic flooding. And it is only that single criterion that the statute requires to be found to qualify. Um, in addition to that, a but-for requirement has to be met, meaning that, the redevelop that redevelopment of the area is feasible only by utilizing tax increment financing. Um, and the redevelopment project and plan does comply with all of those statutory requirements. Um, moving on to part two of this presentation, we're going to talk about the city's strategic and fiscal planning. 
So the city has established, a cert has established certain economic development objectives within its comprehensive planning process. Those objectives include, among many others, um, providing access to the area to allow convenient travel between adjacent commercial developments that front along Weber Road, um, to provide residential streets in new development areas near Weber Road and Division Street, um, to coordinate infrastructure planning in the area, to make sure that there's appropriate <coughs> capacity and access for water and sewer service, and to address the lack of stormwater infrastructure in the area, which goes back to the notion of flooding that isn't being addressed by stormwater infrastructure currently. Um, the city's strategies in pursuing the TIF designation uh, would allow the city to facilitate the preparation of vacant sites for development, redevelopment, coordinate site preparation to prepare land for new development, and foster the installation, replacement, repair, and or improvement of infrastructure. So the TIF designation consistent with the 2014 comprehensive plan, the city is proposing the redevelopment of this, what they believe to be a potentially street, strategically important economic area for the city. Um, the TIF designation is needed to address the constraints that, we, that I mentioned earlier, the constraints to development, um, mostly revolving around a history of chronic flooding. So the TIF designation is key to developing existing and underutilized properties within the TIF, TIF district. Uh, the TIF designation is key to the long-term financial stability of the area, and the TIF designation is key to achieving the economic development goals of the comprehensive plan. So the TIF qu qualification factors, again, like I said before, we have found this to be under the act vacant blighted area um, based on a single finding that there is a history of chronic flooding and that this one finding alone of chronic flooding is sufficient to qualify the TIF district as a, vi as a vacant blighted area. Um, now, so what, is what does that mean, chronic flooding? So according to the act, an area is subject to chronic flooding that adversely impacts on real property in the area as certified by a registered professional engineer or an appropriate regulatory agency or a finding that surface water discharges from all or part of the area and, contrib and contributes to flooding within the same watershed in which the particular parcels are located. Um, we do have the city's registered professional engineer here tonight from Robinson Engineering in the event there are any questions specific to the finding of chronic flooding. Um, but according to Robinson's report, um, they decided that this proposed TIF district does meet the criterion for chronic flooding. Um, Robinson found that factors of chronic flooding on the property are very well documented by numerous government agencies that track these things, as well as other recognized professional sources, <coughs> and that chronic flooding is distributed throughout the entire property. Um, also, according to Robinson Engineering, when property is in an undeveloped state and it has chronic flooding, there is often a requirement that additional measures be taken to improve drainage. Um, and those measures could be thought of as, a, as an impediment to development because of the cost associated with that. So if the city can create a TIF district, the city can help with the cost of infrastructure that would address that issue. Um, also, in developing um, a site with chronic flooding, some areas of the site may end up being rendered undevelopable, undevelopable or require soil modifications in order to be buildable, buildable. So the point is that these factors of chronic flooding create, you know, out of the ordinary circumstances, 
that otherwise wouldn't apply if somebody wanted to redevelop this property and there were no chronic flooding issues. Um, the key elements of the TIF plan, um, <coughs> the proposed uses for this area are commercial, retail, residential, and mixed use uses. The proposed budget, and keep in mind, this is a number that's intended to um, apply to the entire 23-year term of the TIF. It's also stated in today's $22, last year's $22. Uh, we have a budget of $27,750,000. And that budget, like I said, is sized to accommodate poten potential development and redevelopment requirements um, over those 23 years. And that TIF budget is a maximum amount. Um, it doesn't mean the city has to spend it. Um, the base EAV, the base equalized assessed value of the property as it stands today, in 2020, as it was in 2021, we don't have 2022 data yet, was, is only $72,871 a year. Um, we estimate, based on our project projections that over the life of the TIF, the 23-year life of the TIF, <coughs> that the equalized assessed valuation has the potential to grow to somewhere between 40 million to 55 million. Um, again, that's predicated on a number of assumptions, including absorption, uses, market factors, and that sort of thing. Um, but there is the point is there's the potential to create that much EAV over the 23 years. Um, we did bring the budget itself. I can pass this around. Um, but you pro I don't know if all of you can see this, but um, the biggest line item in the budget is infrastructure improvements to address the issues of chronic flooding and things that um, relate to public utilities down there. That's 15000 out of the $27,750. Um, the total budget amount, it's Another important. 15, 15 out of I'm sorry? You said 15,000 out of 27,000 million, correct? Million, yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, 15 million out of 27 million, yes. Um, while, while the city has the ability to adjust the individual line items within the budget, um, they cannot exceed the total budget over the life of the TIF without going through um, a pretty overwhelming process to amend the budget. Um, other, the more other, other items in the budget are land acquisition and assembly and relocation, demolition site preparation, environmental cleanup, rehabilitation of existing structures, um, interest costs pursuant to the act, professional service costs, including planning, legal engineering, administrative annual reporting and marketing, uh, some job training, and statutory tuition and library costs that the act says they have to be provided for in the event that any of the developments generate students um, or library patrons. Um, as I said, the overall budget cannot be exceeded, but individual line items can be moved around. Um, it covers 23 years, as I mentioned. Um, and the, another important thing to note is that budget expenditures, once, the, once this plan is adopted, a budget established, that doesn't give anybody carte blanche to just come in and start spending money. Any, any proposals to redevelop property, um, still have to go through the normal approvals with the city, the normal entitlements, um, any developments with, it, with, re, with proposed redevelopment agreements would be presented to the city council for approval. Um, so setting this up does not necessarily just open the door to move forward. Um, the point is that all of the normal approvals that have to be made to get a de development done remain in effect. Um, <coughs> So up until today, um, the things that have been done to get us here today, uh, first was the establishment of an in, uh, interested parties registry back in December 5th. 
uh, which is required by the act which says that if anyone is interested in getting information about this or wants to participate in this that they can be um, recorded as an interested party and therefore get mailed all the notices that go out um, the TIF plan itself was placed on file with the city clerk and posted on the city's website on December 23rd the notice of this hearing was mailed to all residential addresses located within 750 feet outside of the TIF boundaries on January 11th. That's something the act requires. Um, a joint review board, which is a board comprised of all of the affected taxing districts, school districts, townships, village, city. Um, they all met on January 19th and had a second meeting on February 7th at which uh, all of the taxing districts approved the TIF plan as compliant with the act. Um, this, this public notice of this public hearing was also published twice in a local newspaper on February 15th and 17th of this year. Um, and notice of this public hearing was also mailed to all taxpayers within the proposed TIF district on February 15th. So those are all the previous steps. The next steps going forward, we have the public hearing tonight. The purpose of the public hearing is to solicit public comment from anyone who has any comment to make. Um, then the city elected officials will review the public input from tonight. Um, after that, the adoption of the ordinances creating the TIF can be done. Um, as soon as 14 days after this and up to 90 days after this. So 14 to 90 day window. Um, if the TIF ordinances are approved by the city council, then they get filed with the county clerk. Um, and again, I will emphasize that the city council will still have to continue to be obligated to approve all zoning entitlements and specific TIF financial incentives associated with any development within the TIF before any development can be undertaken. And that's all, that's everything I have. Anyone have questions? Any questions? Okay. Questions pertaining to the hang, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Reading? You'll have your chance in a minute. Uh, thank you, Nina. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Okay, the next order of business uh, under this item, I, I will ask our city clerk, Christine Vershay Hall, if anyone has submitted <coughs> written public comments to you or your office. No, sir, they haven't. Thank you. With that, I will open it up for anyone who would like to make public comment in regards to this issue. Please step to the podium, state your name for the record. Your address is optional. Sir? My name is, <clears throat> my name is Charles Piscarek. I live on McGillivray Drive, which is just behind the property. Um, I have a Lockport mailing address only, but we're unincorporated. <clears throat> I have to say that I was here 25 years ago at this same podium when that property was going to be developed. City of Crest Hill was going to rezone it, and that fell through when Siegel also built the property next door. So it's been a long 25 years, and I've enjoyed the empty property. I know that it's going to go away, and I wanted just to say that the lady from McKenna brought up my point while I'm here. She said at least 12 times, chronic flooding. And that's why I'm standing here, because my property seems to be the catch-all for that 75 acres of property. The ponding, the draining, the flooding sits in the back and floods my property all the way through the property, all the way to Midlovery Drive, and all the way to that creek. Floods my yard, floods everything. So I just wanted to just read a few items here that I took out of the Robinson Engineering study <clears throat> and also under the TIF paperwork that I'm assuming you all have. I just wanted to put down that uh, Robinson has already documented the status of chronic flooding on that property. 
It's influenced by storm water being a floodplain, and that the purpose of the report shows evidence of chronic flooding. Why I'm here. It says that the existing drainage pattern for this parcel runs south to north, heads my way, and ultimately to Mink Creek, which is then to Cache Creek to the DuPage River. It also states that over half the soil types are subject to frequent flooding. All the soil types have a slow or very slow infiltration rate and thereby, thereby have a high runoff potential. Also, the presence of drain tiles on that property indicates historic flooding. The current drain tile investigation shows that the tiles are damaged in four different locations, which would hinder their function and therefore increase the potential and or frequency of drainage problems of flooding on the property in the area. <coughs> also, according to city staff, flooding has been observed in a few locations within the TIF area and downstream of the TIF area through unincorporated residential property, which is us. That's, uh, as the lady from McKenna said, chronic flooding. Lastly, it's um, the factors of the chronic flooding on the property are well documented by various government entities and other well-recognized sources. My point is all this water eventually shows up on my property. So whatever gets done on that property, I'm hoping that something can be accomplished, something can be done to solve the problem of the flooding that heads my way because water wants to go to that creek can't stop that water. The water wants to go north and it wants to go to that creek. I give Mr. Marino, I turn in a packet to him with pictures. If anybody's interested in looking at those pictures, make a little more, it'll look a little better what I'm saying if you see the pictures of the actual flooding. Um, the lady from Robinson, Dana, also has it. I appreciate her input too and hope that the village and the McKenna and Dana could work with me to come up with some sort of solution. I'm the little guy in the neighborhood, but uh, it affects me and it affects everybody else too, and property values. It's uh, real quickly, I just wanted to say under the section of the TIF paperwork, under qualifications, the area is subject to chronic flooding. It's in the papers. Section four, chronic flooding. The area is subject to chronic flooding. Inversely impacts property values in the area. Drainage, it shows pictures. The pictures has numbers on them. The picture numbered is 232A. If you have that picture, I do. 232A in its entirety covers the back of my property. 232A is listed as a Poorly drained area. <clears throat> if you go on a couple more pages through the TIF paperwork, it's under ponding. The unit shows so section 232A has frequent ponding. If you go to the next group, hydraulic soil group, which is in your TIF paperwork, under the same map symbol 232A, it claims that the rating is CD. CD says Soils have a slow infiltration rate, are often wet. Group D says, soils have a very slow infiltration rate with high runoff potential when thoroughly wet. The problem is that the TIF <coughs> district, which is the farm, is higher than my property. The elevation is higher, so everything wants to run into the north area. So I appreciate you listening to me. I have one other item that I would like to say that's the same thing that I said 25 years ago to this, not sure the same board, is that the property line between our property, all these people here, and the TIF district needs to have a nice berm or something separating us from them. I don't think a fence would solve the problem. I think a nice berm with some nice trees to separate whatever they build between that and us would be appreciated. And I thank you all very much. 
I thank you, sir, for your eloquent uh, comments. Um, I would hope that with all the money going into this development that your problem would be rectified with all the new infrastructure. We do have Dana West here from Robinson. If she would like to care, make any comments in regards to that, if not, it's, it's certainly up to you, Dana. I am far from the engineer, I will say that. That's why I brought pictures. Okay. And I'll be brief. Um, you recapped my report very, very well. A lot of technical components um, within these 91 pages, lots of maps to look at as well. Um, there are a lot of reasons um, we can point to this property and say there is chronic <coughs> flooding. Um, it is consistent with other chronic flooding reports that I have written and my colleagues have written to say what, what do we define as chronic flooding. In this particular case, we had a couple additional sources because throughout the course of time we've had a couple different developers looking at doing something with this property and so we have collected additional items here like the drain tile survey and wetland uh, delineations that actually point more to the challenges with developing this property. Um, in my timeline here in the city, you know, in the last 14 years, there's been a few different inquiries and applications in developing this property, and apparently it extends at least 25 years uh, back. Um, there, there are some challenges with this property, and uh, we know that there are going to have to be some additional accommodations that are being made. And uh, right now we are, we are in, the, in the process of talking about additional storm sewer infrastructure um, in order to accommodate that. Um, as you all probably know, by the nature of development, storm water um, improvements will be seen downstream just by the nature of city codes and Will County codes that uh, uh, my team helps to enforce here along with your staff. Um, but the, and for this particular parcel, there will be additional accommodations that will need to be made in order to, to move it forward. So. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right, anyone else would like to speak in regards to this uh, issue, please step to the podium, state your name for the record, your address is optional. I will ask a second time if anyone would like to speak in regards to this issue, please step to the podium, state your name for the record, address is optional, and a third time. If anyone would like to speak in regards to this issue of the creation of the TIF district on this property, Please step to the podium, state your name for the record, and your address is optional. Let the record show that everyone who uh, was asked um, was given the opportunity to come to the podium and speak in regards to this issue. Uh, with that, I will ask our uh, city attorney if there is any other um, information that needs to be required, or are we uh, now able to close the public hearing? I have a motion. I, I think we uh, maybe have concluded the public hearing. You just look for a motion to close the public okay. hearing so moved. at this point. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion to close the public hearing at 7.41 p.m. by Alder Person Overland, seconded by Alder Woman Gazal. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Shea? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. And Tina you know. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for uh, the information that you've provided. Uh, with that, we will resume regular session at 7.41 p.m. and go back to the um, agenda items. First, our city attorney, Mr. Mike Stiff. Good evening, Mike. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I do not have any agenda items uh, tonight. Uh, of course, uh, any questions, I'm happy to try to answer if I can. Any questions of city attorney? All right, thanks, Mike. Moving on to our city administrator, Jim Marino. Good evening, Jim. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I have a couple items uh, in front of you right now. The first is something we discussed at the work session pertaining to the city center construction. Uh, back in uh, July 2020, the city uh, engaged SECO Construction Services to conduct some uh, testing and inspections during the construction that included um, soil testing, concrete, masonry, asphalt, and other earthwork and structural steel. Some of that uh, work was done. Some of the tests and uh, inspections were conducted, but not all of them. 
Therefore, it would make sense to uh, have uh, tests and inspections of the completed work done at this time to the extent possible, understanding that everything may not be able to be inspected and tested now that the building is uh, erected. We had gone out to SECO um, Construction Services and asked them to give us a proposal to conduct this testing and inspections, and that's what you have in front of you uh, tonight for consideration. If SECO were to conduct this work, then they would provide us with a report detailing their findings. So tonight I would ask that you approve the proposal with SECO in the amount of $9,660. Motion would be in order. So moved. I'll make that motion. We have a motion. Would that be a second? We, we, second. We have a motion by Alderwoman Gazal, seconded by <coughs> Alderman Kubal. To approve a contract with SECO Consultants Incorporated to conduct inspection and testing services at City Center in amount of $9,660. Questions or comments? Uh, yes, I have a couple of questions on some of these documents. Um, we're listed as Village Hall, Village Hall, Village Hall. Uh, those will be adjusted to City Hall, I presume? Yes. Anybody else? Okay, roll call, please. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Cepedi? Yes. Nate Elbert? Yes. Joe Kubel? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brashe? Yes. Gerald Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Casal? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. The next item I have uh, also pertains to the city center with respect to the mechanical system. The, HVAC system, the city had contracted with mechanical services or mechanical concepts um, to provide those services for installation of the mechanical system. Uh, unfortunately, mechanical concepts has gone out of business and there's still some remaining work to be done. So what we would like to do is bring in Kerwin Mechanical Service, who is our current um, existing contractor for maintaining the HVAC, HVAC systems in all of our facilities. We asked them to put together a proposal to inspect the system and determine what work is remaining and if there's any additional work that needs to be done. If you recall, uh, at a previous meeting on February 20th, the City Council voted to terminate our contract with Mechanical Concepts. Since that time, my, Mike Stiff and I had a conversation with the insurance company, Hudson Insurance, that is holding the bond for mechanical concepts. And Hudson Insur Insurance gave us the consent to go ahead and engage Kerwin Mechanical to do this initial work. Once Kerwin does this work, they will provide us with a report identifying what additional or what remaining work needs to be done and if there's any additional work that needs to be done. And once uh, we get that report, then we can move on from there and do any other work that's needed. Um, we would still have to confer with the uh, insurance company and get their consent to proceed with that work. Is there anything additional you want to propose? No, I think that summarizes it. So what you have in front of you is a proposal from Kerwin at a base amount of uh, $7,480 plus uh, $2,680 uh, for an additional option for additional work we think is necessary. So and, move. And Hudson has approved that. So the way we envision this working is that once, presuming that you as the council approve this, when Kerwin submits their bill, we would pay it, city would pay it, and then we would turn that over to Hudson and Hudson would reimburse the city. So this $10,160 should be coming from Hudson Insurance, ultimately. What was the amount again? I'm so sorry. It's 10160 Okay. If you look at your proposal, yeah, there's the here. base amount, and then it's option number one plus the base amount, I think, should come to the 10160 We're not doing option number two because that was recommended as not necessary by Harbor. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Alderman Albert, seconded by Alderman Kubal to approve a proposal with Kerwin Mechanical Service to perform inspection and testing services on the mechanical system at City Center in the amount of $10,160. Any more questions or comments? Yes, I have several questions on this one. Um, 
somebody asked me, was the air balance report completed on, on the air testing? Um, I'd have to check. I don't know. I'd have to ask <clears throat> Sean. Because we should be measuring the airflow in each duct, it says. And the fire dampers, were they inspected because the fire department has final approval on the fire dampers? Okay. It says um, on the print it should list the cubic feet per minimum on the return air and exhaust air at every duct and every return. Okay. Anything else? These are things we would go over with Kerwin. Just, you know. Well, I'd just rather ask it before rather than be asking right. it after. Right. Okay. Anybody else? A roll call, please. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Ken Oberlin? Yes. Mark Zapiti? Yes. Ned yes. Albert? Yes. Joe Kubel? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Mache? Yes. And Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. That's all I have at this time. Okay, any questions of city administrator? Yes, I have a question. Is the uh, salary adjustment we'll be on the next uh, work session? I was planning on doing that in closed session on the 27th. We will have enough time for the budget? Uh, yes, we should. We should? Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jim. All right, moving on to our Public Works Department. Our Director of Public Works, Mark Seifert, was unable to be here this e evening. So I will, uh, I will go through some of his report here. His first agenda item is approval resolution, approving a First Amendment to the preliminary agreement regarding formation of a Regional Water Commission. Uh, you do have information in your packet. Um, as was presented to Council uh, last month, the process of forming the Regional Water Commission has been delayed on the account of the heightened level of scrutiny that the Illinois Department of <coughs> Natural Resources has applied to the Lake Michigan water allocation applications filed by four of the six um, municipalities in this um, commission. That would be Romeoville, Shanahan, Manuka, and City of Crest Hill. For this reason, it is necessary that each commission member formally approve an amendment to the preliminary agreement that was signed in January of 2022. So I'm just going to go through three of the six bullet points. Um, the first one is Section 3-A, which pushes back the deadline for the member approval of the final Water Commission Intergovernmental Agreement from April 30th, 2023 <coughs> to June 30th, 2024. This is to give the City of Crest Hill and the other Lake Michigan applicants time to secure their allocation permits. Second bullet point, Section 3B, provides for additional funding of Water Commission formation activities. Each municipality agrees to contribute $110,000 on July 1st, 2023, and the same again on July 1st, 2024. Third bullet point is the last one, Section 4B, creates a mechanism whereby the Water Commission may provide member communities with a credit if Number one, the member moves its primary delivery point. And number two, the move increases that member's capital cost but reduces the commission's capital cost and does not increase the cost of any other individual member. Now, all of these documents have been review reviewed by mm -hmm. Spage and Taylor, um, along with city staff here and everybody was involved in the creation of these documents. I will tell you that the mayors meet <clears throat> monthly in regards to the formation and the Lake Michigan, the, the Water Commission. Um, all six mayors, Joliet, Shorewood, Shanahan, Manuka, Romeoville, and Crest Hill all approved this agreement. So I am asking for approval of a resolution accepting the First Amendment to the preliminary agreement regarding the formation of 
a regional water commission. But before I, we get that motion, I would uh, defer to our city attorney who's been involved, uh, Mike Stiff, in a lot of these negotiations. <clears throat> also, if there's anything else you'd like to add to what I had said. Uh, I have nothing to add. Um, as you know, Mike Sanchi from my office has been presenting evidence to the uh, Department of Natural Resources and has been working on this. Uh, I did uh, get a brief opportunity to speak with Mike this afternoon, not as long as I had wanted to, uh, when I learned that Mark was not going to be here as the fallback for a lot of the technical questions. But uh, I did uh, speak with Mike and I did get a chance to look over the changes. I think the memo is very self-explanatory and hits the the main changes to the agreement. Um, uh, but, you know, Mike Sanchi did say that, you know, he crafted the resolution and is uh, comfortable recommending it to the council. Yeah, this has been a long process. It has. Yes. <laughs> and obviously, as the, the main bullet point is pushing the dates out into 2024, and that's because the Department of Natural Resources is uh, being quite the stickler for these allocations. Yes. Any other questions, comments from council? Hearing none, I would ask for a motion for approval. So moved is presented. Second. We have a motion by all the person Oberlin, seconded by Alderwoman Gazal for the approval of a resolution accepting the First Amendment to the preliminary agreement regarding the formation of a regional water commission. Any questions or comments? Roll call, please. Nate Elbert? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Bache? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. And Mark Zapiti? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And it is resolution number 1167. Okay. I thank you for that vote. Uh, I'm sure that if uh, Mark was here, he would also thank you for this vote. Like I said, this has been a long, long process to come to this point, but we will get through it with the uh, Illinois Department of Natural Resources and we will move forward to bring a sustainable water system of Lake Michigan water to the city of Crest Hill and the other five communities for many, many years to come by 2030. Uh, Mark will be back tomorrow. So if you have any questions, please hold them until uh, you can ask him. Uh, moving on to our city engineer, Ron Wiedemann. Good evening, Ron. Thank you, Mayor. I have three items on the agenda tonight. The first item is looking for a motion to execute a professional service engineering agreement with Christopher Burke Engineering to form ComEd Service Coordination for an amount of $3,700. This was for the three welcome signs as presented at the last workshop. Motion would be in order? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Rochet, seconded by Alderman Jefferson to approve a professional service uh, proposal with ComEd service drop with Christopher Burke for city welcome signs not to exceed the amount of $3,700. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brashe? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia <coughs> Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Zapiti? Yes. And Nate Albert? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. Thank you. The next item is looking for a motion for the execution of a professional service agreement with Christopher Burke Engineering to perform design engineering services for the Prairie from Rainer to Theodore Roadway Project for a not to exceed amount of $18,865. This was one of the projects that was presented some time back for the next, for the next year. This, the funding for this project would be the remaining Illinois rebuild dollars. So moved. We have a motion by Alderman Dyke, seconded by Alderman Verche to execute a professional service agreement with Christopher B. Burke Engineering to perform design engineering services for the Prairie Avenue from Rainer Avenue to Theodore Street roadway rehabilitation pro project not to exceed the amount of $18,865. Questions or comments? Roll call. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Bud Exal? Yes. Tim Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubel? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. And John Rochet? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And the last item, I'm looking for a motion to execute a professional service agreement with Christopher Burke Engineering to perform design engineering services on the Theodore and Boreo Drive roadway rehabilitation projects for an act exceed amount of $24,650. Again, this was presented earlier this year for the roadway projects to be completed this summer. So moved. Second. 
We have a motion by Alderwoman Gazal, seconded by Alderman Dyke to execute a professional service agreement with Christopher B. Burke Engineering to perform design engineering services for the Theodore and Borio Drive Roadway Rehabilitation Project not to exceed the amount of $24,650. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. John Shea. Yes. Darrell Jefferson. Yes. Claudia Gazal. Yes. Tina Oberlin. Yes. Mark Sapiti. Yes. Nate Albert. Yes. Joe Kubo. Yes. And Scott Dyke. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, I do have one more thing. It's not on the agenda, but it's more informational. Um, this Wednesday, we'll have a pre-construction meeting for the Cheney and Center Water Main and Roadway Rehabilitation Project. The contractor will be looking to start getting barricades out later this week and next week we'll be doing some material storage <laughs> and potential saw cutting. Um, we are working on notification for the residents. We'll be talking about that on Wednesday. The school has also been contacted. They will be at the pre-con meeting on Wednesday. Um, right now the schedule is to kind of keep the contractor out of the area of the school until school is over. I'll have more details after Wednesday's meeting, but just to let you know, we are working on a public notification plan. It will be a combination of some hand deliveries, information on the website, um, maybe in a project website. We're still kind of working through those details. I just want to give everybody a heads up. They start getting phone calls. Um, they can just shut, you know, shut them my way. And that's it. Yeah, and that's a project that's long, long overdue on Center Street. Um, and we will do our best to keep all of the children at Cheney School safe during the construction periods. We'll try to avoid that building and that area until school is over. Uh, so we do ask for patience and consideration for all the residents that live in those areas. Any questions of city engineer? Okay, thanks Ron. Thank you. Um, moving on to community development, we have uh, two plan commission recommendations. The first one is to approve an ordinance for a variation to the Crest Hill zoning ordinance with respect to certain real property, the application of Robert Bannon of 2441 Durness Court. You do have information in your packet from Maura Ragoni. Maura could not be here this evening, so I am going to turn it over to our city administrator, Jim Marino, for some opening comments. At the uh, February 13th work session, Maura Ragoni, as the mayor mentioned, brought to you two items that were approved by the uh, plan commission. The first one we have here is a request from Mr. Bannon at 2441 Durness Court who's requesting a variance to permit the construction of a shed on his property. This was approved by the plan commission with a condition that was recommended, the condition being that no portion of the shed shall be constructed with the public, within the public utility drainage easement. So before you tonight, you have an ordinance that would grant that variance with that condition that would be ready for your approval. Okay, any questions of Jim in regards to this variance request? Mayor, there's one correction on this. On, on the ordinance, Mr. Bannon's address is 2411 Durness Court. Well, okay, typo. Not 2441. 2411, okay. Okay, Mr. Bob Bannon is here. Bob, would you like to step to the podium and make any comments uh, before I go any further? I'll keep it brief. Okay. This is Bob Bannon from 2411 Durness Court. Good evening. Yeah, we, we, we have a, a little shed. It's like a little tight shed. It's eight foot by 10 foot. And we just want to put it in the backyard. And so we, you know, we have the cornfield in the back. The power lines are back there. And so it, you know, we had a good discussion at the planning commission. So I just, I think, I think everything's pretty much in order. It will be movable. It was going to be a, um, removable slab while it's pavers. Pavers, because that's allowed by the, the city ordinance. And it'll be a very, very movable if we have to someday, no matter what happens. But I think, I think I appreciate you guys' approval. And uh, hopefully we can get this started in about a month or so when it warms up and dries out. Okay. So thank you. All right, any and questions? I'm not, and I'm not sure whether Maura added, but there was one person who came to the plan commission, one of his neighbors, and supported Okay. So there was nobody that spoke against it. There was one right. person that said I believe she that, did say that. that it was supported. So, and it was a unanimous recommendation, I believe, on the plan. Okay, any questions of Mr. Bannon from City Council? Okay, thanks, Bob. There's, thank I would there's ask no other uh, location that that shed can be put that <coughs> needs to be six inches from the property line. 
that's the only place it can go? I believe that's the only place. We, you know, we, we have a beautiful view looking toward the great school. We don't want to put it there. You know, that, that's a feasible, very feasible to put it there, but that's that the whole, that's why we live there. You know, so we, we, we want to put it in the back where it's next to our neighbor's shed and it's really out of the way of anybody's you know, problems or trouble. You know, nobody will see it. It's, it's right along the, the cornfield. We'd rather put it there. I just was wondering. Okay, thank you. Motion to concur with the plan commission. Okay, hang on a second. Uh, I have to ask, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak for or against the request of Mr. Robert Bannon of 2441 Durness Court to reduce the rear <coughs> setback requirements from 10 to 6 feet and the condition that was placed on this uh, ordinance in regards to the plan commission's recommendation? Please step to the podium, state your name for the record, your address is optional. And just as a correction, Mr. Mayor, it was 10 feet to 6 inches, not 6 oh, feet. Oh, my fault. My fault. You are correct. And the address is 2411. Okay. Um, okay, second time, if anyone would like to speak for or against the request of Mr. Robert Bannett of 2411 Durnas Court for a reduction of the rear yard setback requirement from a minimum of 10 to 6 inch, 10, in, 10, to six, 10 feet to 6 inches along with the condition placed on by the plan commission please step to the podium state your name for the record address is optional and the third request if anyone would like to speak for or against the request of mr robert bannon of 24 11 durness court for a rear yard sec setback reduction from 10 feet to six inches please step to the podium state your name for the record address is optional we'll let the record show that no one has approached the podium uh, to the members of City Council, you have an ordinance approving a variation to the Crest Hill Zoning Ordinance with respect to certain real property. The application of Mr. Robert Bannon, 2411 Durn S. Court. Motion would be in order. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Albert, seconded by <laughs> Alderman Jefferson for the uh, approval of an ordinance approving a variation to the Crest Hill Zoning Ordinance with respect to certain real property. The application of Mr. Robert Bannon, 2411 Durn S. Court. Any more questions or comments? Roll call. Scott Tuddy? Yes. John Bershay? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kuo? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Ordinance 1944. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Uh, next on the agenda is paperwork in your packet for the approval. <clears throat> Of an ordinance for a variation of the City of Crystal sign code with respect to certain real property, the application of Brown's Chicken at 16111 Weber Road. You do have information in your packet. I will turn it over to our City Administrator, Jim Marino, for some opening comments also. All right, this is a request to permit the installation of electronic message center sign on the existing monument sign. Uh, where Brown's Chicken is located. This was discussed at the work session and it was presented and approved by the Plan Commission with a condition that the property owner install along with that sign uh, landscaping in front of the base of the proposed sign. So uh, approval of the ordinance with that condition would be in order. And just for the record, that's two-sided uh, sign, correct? Right. Need a motion? I make a motion. Uh, not yet. Hmm? Okay. Any more questions of city administrator in regards to this request? Uh, I do not see anyone here from Brown's Chicken, so I would um, ask if anyone would like to step to the podium to speak for and against an ordinance for a variance to for the permit the installation of an electronic message sign on the existing Brown's Chicken sign located at 16111 Weber Road along with the condition of landscaping at the base of the proposed sign. Please step to the podium, state your name for the record and your address is optional. Second request if anyone would like to speak for and against the request of Tim Kenefick from Brown's Chicken for the installation of an electronic message sign on the existing monument sign along with the condition of a landscaping at the base of the proposed sign located at 16111 Weber Road. Please step to the podium, state your name for the record. Your address is optional. 
And the third time, if anyone would like to speak for or against the ordinance of uh, Mr. Tim Kenefick from Brown's Chicken for the installation of electronic message sign and the condition of landscaping as proposed by the plan commission at the base of the sign. Please step to the podium, state your name for the record, address is optional. Let the record show that no one has approached the podium. To the city council, you have an ordinance approving a variation to the Crest Hill sign code with application of Brown's Chicken located at 16111 Weber Road before you. Motion would be in order. Make a motion. Second. We have motion by Alderwoman Gazal, seconded by Alderman Albert for the approval of an ordinance approving a variation to the Crest Hill sign code with the respect to certain real property of the applicant of Brown's Chicken, 16111 Weber Road. Final questions or comments? Roll call, please. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Roche? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Cazal? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Ordinance 1945. Okay, the final item under community development is the approval of a resolution adopting the 2023 zoning map for the city of Crest Hillville County, Illinois. Information is in your packet. Motion would be in order. So moved is presented. Second. We have a motion by Alder Person Oberlin, seconded by Alderman Albert for the approval of re a resolution adopting 2023 zoning map for the city of Crest Hill, Will County, Illinois. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Claudia Cazal? Yes. <coughs> Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Roche? Yes. Thorell Jefferson? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Resolution 1168. Okay, that's all the agenda items under community development. Memora will be here tomorrow if you have any questions for her. Uh, moving on to the mayor's report, I do not, or no, police department. Police department, I forgot about our police chief, Ed Clark. Ed? Good evening, Mayor <laughs> Council. This evening I have on the agenda a request to purchase a computer and two monitors. This is for our uh, new building's um, security room, uh, helping the operation. And of our security cameras, and it'll complete our our uh, design in that room. And Happily then, and joyfully, so moved. Thank you. Second. We have motion by Alderman Person Overland, seconded by Alderman Jefferson for the approval of purchase of computers and two monitors for the security room. Questions or comments? Roll call. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Elbert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brache? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gasol? Yes. And Tino Rilly. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. I'd uh, just like to announce that uh, this weekend the police department will be uh, participating in the polar plunge for Special Olympics. So it's looking like it's going to be about 30 some degrees, so it's going to be a little chilly for them. And uh, <laughs> we, uh, we'll just continue with our, oh, our uh, work with the uh, with the uh, Special Olympics of Illinois, and uh, it's been a great, rewarding experience. We also have a big group from uh, other departments within the city that have been, have been very helpful. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Where is that happening? It's going to be at Braidwood Recreational Center. Okay, any questions of the police chief? Good luck. Just give us pictures. I'll have a blog. I'll get pictures. Don't worry. All right, thanks, Ed. Thank you. Moving on to the mayor's report, I do not have any agenda items. If there's any questions, I'll try to answer them. Um, hearing none, we'll move on to the city <coughs> clerk's report. Christine Bershay Hall, Chris. Thank you. I have no report to give, but I um, want to wish all those that are participating in a plunge this weekend good luck, and I'll be there to support you guys. And that's all I have. Any questions of city clerk? Thanks, Chris. Uh, City Treasurer support our Treasurer Glenn Conklin. Good evening, Glenn. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Tonight I seek approval on our list of bills through March 7th of 2023 in the amount of $675,783.05. So moved is presented. <laughs> Can I get a second? John, second. All right. We have a motion by Alder Person Overland, seconded by Alderman Verche for the approval of the list of bills. Questions or comments? Roll call. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. 
Scott Dyke. Yes. John Brachet. Yes. Darrell Jefferson. Yes. Claudia Cazal. Yes. Tina Oberlin. Yes. And Mark Sapiti. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, informationally, re regular and overtime payroll from February 13th through February 26th, 2023, uh, totaled $239,633.46. That's all I have for this evening, unless anyone has any questions. Questions of our treasurer? Thanks, Glenn. Thanks. Good night. Uh, unfinished business. We have nothing on unfinished business. Anybody? New business? Committee liaison reports, anyone? Well, I've been told that the uh, Ladis Memorial Program will be held on Sunday, June 11th this year at Ladis Park at 11 a.m. Thank you. Uh, city Council comments. Positive City Council comments. Anything you'd like to share with any of your constituents? We'll begin with Ward 2 this evening. I'll do one with Oh, I uh, would like to announce that we'll be holding... Uh, a pop-up uh, pantry, May 6th, uh, location will be determined either City Hall parking lot or the library. It will be from 10 to 12, so more flyers will be going out. And I also want to wish the 8th grade of volleyball team on the regional um, starting tomorrow. And the band competition in Tinley Park this Saturday. So I'll be busy this week. That's all, Mayor. Alderman Jefferson? Nothing at this time. Or one Alderman Brochet. Um, you only need to have tell the police department good luck. That's all. Alderman Dyke. <coughs> uh, good luck to the police department on that polar plunge. Hopefully no one gets sick. And uh, I want to wish everyone a happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, yeah. Or uh, or Alderman Kubal. Nothing to add at this time, Mayor. Alderman Albert. Uh, the mayor just announced that the uh, Crestle Lions Club Easter egg hunt will be held on Saturday, April 8th at noon sharp, uh, right near Cheney Pool in the field behind uh, Cheney Pool. So that's open to kids, uh, newborns to 10 years old. Noon sharp. Thank you. Board 3, Alderman Sapiti. Uh, nothing at this time, Mayor. Alder Person Overland. Well, I wish everyone in the police department good luck on their plunge and to all my Irish friends out there and my one day Irish friends. Happy St. Patty's Day and uh, enjoy, but enjoy in moderation. Public comment. Anyone like to address City Council, please step to the podium, state your name for the record. Address is optional. Let the record show that no one has approached the podium to our City Attorney Mike. Is there a need for an executive session? There is not. Motion to adjourn, Mayor. Second. We have motion for an adjournment by Alderman Dyke, second by Alderman Brochet. I don't want to Roll call, please. Joe Kuwa? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brochet? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gonzalez? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. And Nate Elbert? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, meeting is adjourned at 8.16 p.m. Thank you and good evening, and everybody have a safe uh, St. Patrick's Day. We'll call it.